Okay, so this is uh, looking at the sled mount through the other camera, which is the one you've seen from the photograph is um, mounted to another gooseneck that's in a fixed position, not trained directly on a device, but uh, clamped to the table or the desk where the participant is sitting. Now, um, that th this particular camera can serve either to look at the device and using the device, or it could actually also be used um, if the sled was in use to capture the screen activity and what was going on with the device, then the um, fixed mounted camera could be used to capture the participants facial gestures uh, during the test. I think immediately the first thing you notice is that you get just different different data, you get different um, information. The first thing, like for example, you see here is you, you see the dimensions of this particular device that we were just demoing a minute ago. Um, you know, and to that point, you know, as uh, we've invested in cameras with a shorter focal distance, we've gotten shorter and shorter goosenecks to the point where this is what we're dealing with. Very happy with this. It's a lightweight gooseneck. It's very stiff. It has minimum jostling. Um, the platform is very stiff and yet uh, comfortable with rounded edges. It's actually a form of wood. There is um, a non-stick surface on there. There's no real need to uh, tie down the device uh, as long as you have a bit of a, you know, a bit of a friction in there so that it won't slide on its own, you know. Um, and then, you know, some of the things that I was talking about in the last video where the participant will hold this, um, you know, and the, the, the hole helps with the width of it so that people with smaller hands can hold it as comfortably as people with large hands can. And also, as I mentioned, they can also hold their own device, um, you know, fixed in it. But uh, it is important that the camera can be put to the opposite side for people who are left-handed. And so in that case, they would hold the sled like this, and the camera would be mounted on the top. And, um, you know, and the whole reason for this particular design is so that you can move from portrait to a landscape, um, from, a, from a hold your device and use one hand to uh, two devices as you go. And I think that that's what we're really thinking about, is that the research question can completely vary. There may be certain questions where you have to see the entire device in order to learn what you want to learn. There may be other research questions where, as we showed, you know, you just need to be focused on, on the screen in order to learn what you need to learn. So the fixed mount would be um, important in case where you're actually interested in the user's overall behavior more than the screen activity. You might uh, see this, you know, be the case with something like a game console, especially if the, uh, you know, some of the balancing is used as part of the interface and part of the game, and you want to look at the gross behavior with it. We still have the ability to zoom in from a software point of view or zoom out and also move and pan so that if the participant does get out of frame, that can be adjusted digitally without interrupting them. Um, because there again is another key point, which is you want to observe with minimal interruption to it. Coming back to the sled for a minute, another interesting point here is that um, the sled needs to capture the activity without being too much in the way of the participant themselves. And so this is about um, the happy medium that we found. It is far enough away where I don't feel like it's in my way as I'm trying to use the device, and yet it's trained in pretty close. The same can be done for the fixed mount. Um, the way we've designed this is that it will essentially almost sit beside um, the participant's head, like um, right about where the temple piece of their glasses would be to see what they're seeing you know, and do what they're doing. So again, um, let me make one last point. We, we, as, you, as you saw in the blog, we saw some sleds who actually tried to do dual duty. They actually were equipped with two cameras, one that would look down on the device and the other that would look up at the participant. But we just think that there's absolutely no reason to have that second camera looking at the participant be mounted to this device, which it's critical to make this as invisible from a user interface point of view as possible. You are interested in the users interacting with the device, not the user interacting with the camera mount. And that's probably a guiding principle there for designing something like this.
All right, I'm right at five minutes. By the way, the last one at eight and a half minutes, the file size is about 63 megs. So it's a pretty good file. And if we ran this for an hour, um, you know, it's going to be a pretty good sized file. But of course, in post-production, you know, you can bring it down to a size that's reasonable or make some arrangement with the client to deliver it maybe with USB versus on the web or something like that. All right. Thanks.